What does this remind you of? Well, a little bit of rock and roll? Late 50s, <laughs> probably uh, rock and roll music. Uh, a little deep, bit of rock box. and roll. Yeah. yeah. What's going to happen at Georgia Mountain Fair soon? Uh, some concerts are coming back. Some concerts yeah. are coming back. Yeah. Now let's talk about 38 Special. You want to see them. Tell me about them. What kind of music are they? It's rock and roll. It's, it's southern rock and roll. It's kind of like Leonard Skinner type music. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, Don Barnes, uh, lead singer and guitar player, and um, I, I met them back in the 80s, back when they were really hot. Wow. Group. I'm, I got to see them down at the radio station, and, and I got uh, free tickets to go see them at the Omni in Atlanta. Uh -huh. And uh, good. And he used to, when I used to work at the A and P store in Sandy Springs, he'd come in late on a Saturday night after shows and buy groceries or buy something in there, and he'd come <laughs> in with a full length mink coat on and oh know, my gosh, and big rings, and all, <laughs> making some money. And uh, he told me a funny story. He said. Uh, uh, he said they just got back from Japan off of a tour, and I said, "What's those folks like over over there?" He says, "Well, he said they ain't like the people here in the United States. When we play for them, they'd all sit there real quiet with their hands folded until the song was over, and then they'd clap real loud and stuff. Oh, wow. But they wouldn't hoot and holler during yeah. the singing. So, yeah. but they yeah, were respectful. they were respectful. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. a different kind of uh, audience over there. But they're uh, Southern rock, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, I'm going to see that one in, up there at the center, and then." Uh, uh, I think it's in June. Uh, the Happy Together tour is coming back. I'm right. gonna go see that one too. That's your kind of music is in that the way. Be the turtles, turtles, and the Cow Seals, and um, Jay and the Americans. Jay and the Americans. And I, uh, some Come of back a little bit closer. What's that song? Oh. Come a little bit closer. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Uh, anyway, uh, there's uh, uh, six groups, and I can't remember some of the other groups. Yeah. That are be there but it was it was really fun last year and I enjoyed it so yeah. I wanted to go back you know the great thing about going to Georgia Mountain Fair and the Hiawassee and seeing concerts you're leaving Atlanta and you're coming to these beautiful mountains yeah. the mountains are closer than you think traffic's not near as bad traffic's not near as bad <laughs> and if you listen to Dwight Sanford's song about mountain life you will really understand that you're leaving the pressure of the city, the pressure of the crime of the city, the pressure of the traffic of the city, and you're coming northbound. And that lake up there is beautiful. Oh, and, it's beautiful. And there's plenty of good eating spots between here and there. Yes, and it's affordable. Everything that Georgia Mountain Fair does is so affordable. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. And Miss Hilda has brought in some great groups. Yeah. You know, we've interviewed Connie Smith, Charlie Pride, Gene Watson, Jamie Fricky. John Conley, Aaron Tiffin. There were so many great stars that she brought in there. I, Loretta Lynn. I had front row tickets to Loretta Lynn there. She tries to find the very best that they can afford. And she talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Many of the concerts are getting so expensive sure. that they can't get some of the people. And when she told me one guy's price, I said, what? Are you kidding me? Yeah, and some of these people have been out. They, they've been in the music business for 20, 30, 40 years sure. and they're still expensive. Sure. Well, so. you were at the Beach Boys concert, right? Yeah, I went with you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we're sitting there at the Beach Boys and, and I am backstage and I get to see the guy that I just had this major raging crush on for about 10 minutes. And that 10 minutes went quickly. <laughs> it was gone. I was over it. But, but it was so weird because seeing them, I was like, oh, no. Oh, my gosh. And then they're 80. You know, I mean, they're 80. Yeah. And I was like, they're out on stage. And that music, when they started, it sounded the same. Yeah. It was so cool. Everybody in front of us was dancing, and everybody was hooping and hollering. Beach balls time. flying around in the audience. Beach balls yeah. flying around, surfboards out on stage. It was awesome. When that music is gone, when the Beach Boys are gone, there's nothing to replace the Beach Boys. Nothing well, to replace the Beatles. You may not see them uh, again in person. There's always tribute bands out mm -hmm. there, and right. there's always the records. You've got the records, yes. so you can yes. always listen to them. Yes, yes. That's what I like about recording. Now, when we think about the records, I have so many 45s. Me too. The quality of the 45s, not quite what it is today. No, no, but it's still listenable. I love I've got 78s and 45s. Yeah. I've got a whole collection. Yeah. 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 I love them. Yeah. Okay. When it comes to your parents' music, I know that your daddy liked... He's country. Country. But now he liked the Beach Boys. He liked yeah. a little bit of that stuff. Uh, he was born in 1936, so anything from about 46 or 44 up till the time of Elvis and all that, mm -hmm. that was his, his time. Did either of your mother. parents love Elvis? Yeah. Uh, my dad actually, it was funny, Mama liked Elvis. She told me a funny story. She said when he first came on the Ed Sullivan show and they all sat down to watch it, 
her mother went and turned the TV off because here's a guy shaking yes. around and she didn't like it. Yes. So she turned wouldn't let him watch it. My dad told me though he liked Chuck Berry better. He said everything Elvis is doing is what Chuck Berry's already done. Yes. I said, yes. Okay. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and and that is something that Elvis's music was from him going to gospel churches, yeah. often black churches in the Memphis area. And that's where the music that captured America came from was the black churches. Still does. Yeah. If you want to have a good time, go to a black church and absolutely. have a good time. They, they know how to carry on yes. and sing. Yes. <laughs> and if you want to go for a good meal, go to Homecoming. Is it called Pilgrim Baptist Church there at um, Tate near Smoky Holler? Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh, the food is amazing. Mm -hmm. Country The cooking. music is amazing. Yeah. It's, it's so cool. When we look back on our life, and yeah, I'm older than you, but we kind of grew up in that safety zone of church, family, friends. You know who you could depend on. You know if you had a problem, somebody was going to come to your rescue. If you had a flat tire, somebody was going to be there to help you. You know, now yeah. if you have a flat tire, people don't stop because they're afraid to. Call AAA. Yeah, yeah call AAA and sit there and wait seven hours. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, y'all. Yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate Hild up there at the, at the Georgia Mountain uh, Anderson Music Hall because... Uh, there's some good shows up there. Sure People there need is. to get up there and yeah. see them. Yeah, it's awesome. So if you don't have tickets, I'm going to have a few that I'm going to give away on Facebook, and I'll do that probably over the weekend. But um, get out and, you know, for a great anniversary visit. Uh-oh, what have I done to Barbie? There you go, honey baby. Stand up right. Stand up and pay attention. There you go. I had to wear those shoes when I was a cheerleader. And let me tell you all about something. Those particular shoes? No, no. Yeah, those shoes, that was the size I wore. I have a bone on the on You were a cheerleader? Yeah, I was. Y'all, that was funny. <laughs> I knew he was going to get me before the day was over. Rah, rah. <laughs> this, uh, let's get it funnier. Sis boom bar. I also played basketball. Now, y'all know how short and duffy I am. I played basketball. You Isn't couldn't dunk, could I you? I was a guard, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. But I loved, I loved that. I loved that part of my life. I also went to school with Debbie Fuqua, who was a world-known gymnast, and Liz Allen. Could I do any of those things? Oh, heck no. Oh, heck no. Oh, heck no. But we look back at our childhood, so many great memories. Oh, yeah. So many great memories. I loved, I loved, I played basketball, I played baseball, I got trophies from baseball and basketball, and loved that time of my life. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know what Charlie Pride loved more than music? Baseball. 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 Don't blame him. He owned part of a team. He actually owned a bank. <laughs> Charlie Pride was this guy, when you heard his music, there was nothing like him. There was nothing like him. And, and up until he was 80 years old, we saw him on stage at Georgia Mountain Fair, the best concert ever. He my dad, was my so, dad loved his music. Oh my gosh, he was amazing. He was so good. And there's nobody to replace him. You know, yeah. I, I think now, I don't watch the Country Music Awards because when I do, I get mad because I'm like, that's not country music. That's not anything. And yesterday, I saw a message that that little bleach blonde bimbo said something about um, she won't do a concert in America if our president goes back to work. Can we talk about the shirt you have on today? Oh uh, yeah, it's a shirt. I mean, no. It, uh, <laughs> it's a shirt for sure. <laughs> no, I was telling you before the show, uh, I bought this several years ago, and this was before he ever ran for president. Donald Trump used to make uh, have his own clothing line. Right. And so I bought one of the shirts. It just says Donald J. Trump in the back of the collar. I love it. I love and it. I just whipped it out of my closet this morning and <laughs> put it on. It's the coolest and, thing. <laughs> but, uh, he, yeah, he's got a, dress line, uh, a line of dress shirts, and, and of course, I like this particular one. So yeah. I just wear yeah. it. I don't care whose name's on it. Yeah, yeah. It I'll, I love whose name's on it. So, And everybody knows, you know, the primaries went through yesterday, and we're moving forward to the election. And, you know, you can read the disclaimer on the end of the show, and it says that it's my opinion, my guest opinion, not the opinion of whoever, you know, whatever. <laughs> But I laugh about that because, and I've said this, and I will go out on a limb today, 99.9% .9 of my friends vote the same way I vote. I do have two friends that vote the other way, and I just try not to wake them up on election day. <laughs> so, you know. Well, you learn there's certain things you don't discuss around certain yeah, people. Yeah, That's you all. just, you know, yeah. you live and learn. And, and I got tickled one day. It was when gas prices first started going up. I was coming from ball ground up here. <clears throat> And I was thinking about how much I spend a month on gas, and I was like just stressing about it. And I get to the red light up here at Longhorn, and I get behind a lady who has one of those stickers on it that I'll not say that word. And I thought, 
well, I just ought to hit her in the bumper. <laughs> and I said, no, then I'd get sued, never mind. It's like people wake up. The reality is we can't afford groceries, we can't afford gas, and first-time buyers are completely out of the home market now unless their parents gave them a chunk of change to pay down on a house. It's really, really hard to see. You know, when you have five kids and you raise all those five kids the same, and one's still in school, one's trying to advance their career, one's working at, at growing a little bit more, they don't have the money to save to put down on a house because they're struggling to keep groceries on the table. It's hard. It is. It's very hard. One thing I'll say about the, the topic you were just talking about, I've got a picture on my phone, which I won't show you right now, but it's April 22nd of 2020. Mm -hmm. You know who was in office yes. then? Gas was At, 186. On uh, South Main Street in Jasper, there's a little gas station. It was 135. <laughs> the, I've got a picture of it. A dollar 35. Dollar 35. Wow. That's just four years ago. Yes, yes, yes. And our border was closed. I will say that too. There's a t those are two things that I, I think was making the election. Really good money at sure. a dollar 35 a gallon. Sure, sure. And you think about how many gallons a week do you and Jordan buy? Uh, I know we run through about 90 something just in the lawnmowers uh -huh. a, a month. Mm -hmm. So you divide that up, you know, it's 20 something gallons, about 22 gallons a week. Right. And just in the lawnmowers, that's not counting the truck right. and the weed eaters. Right. Yeah. And, so and we affect, it affects every dollar or every dime that goes up, it affects our bottom line. Sure, sure. And, and that's what, and, and this is so funny, I sent the president every year I have supported financially my president. And I haven't been able to this time. And I explained to him why. I said, it's because of the failed election that put that person in the White House that took my income. You could have sent him a wooden nickel. Yeah, I could. And, and I explained <laughs> that to him. And I said, I will volunteer. I will make phone calls. I will go door to door. I will do anything I can do to help. But financially. I'm talking about the one that's in office now. You could have sent him, oh, a, wood, you could have sent him, him a wooden nickel. I wouldn't waste a penny on sending okay. him nothing. No, oh, well. no, no. But, but I Just pray, I am praying, praying, praying that America wakes up and that America wakes up. And y'all, you know, vote well, the way you want to vote, you're going to have to deal with it. Here's another so. thought, too. I thought about this the other day. Let's say uh, your guy does get back in and he has four years of it. What happens after that four years? He, I'm, can't, he cannot I'm run terrified. again. I'm terrified. I'm terrified. He cannot run again. I'm terrified. I, I choose, I pray that he is going to have a strong vice president that can carry on that legacy. That's that's my prayer. Speaking and, of that, who would you recommend? That oh, he I sure don't want a woman because we're going to be at war. I want a strong man, preferably one with a military career. I want somebody who shows the same strength that our president showed. So you wouldn't uh, get him to choose Tulsa Gabbard or? No, uh, I don't want a woman in there. Or Nikki Haley? No. or. No, or, no, Hillary, sure or, Hillary, or Hillary Clinton. No, 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 no don't want a woman in there. And I'm a woman who's been in business all my life. I don't want a woman in the White House now. I think it's the worst time possible. And that cackling thing that's in the White House now that goes to visit there, oh, heck no. We have got to have strength in America. We are to a point that the world is laughing at us and making fun of us. I agree. And I think we yeah. need, I don't know who he should choose. He sends me something every day and wants to know who do I choose. And I'm like, I don't know, just something with strength, somebody with strength. How do you feel about Tim Scott? Like him, like yeah. him a lot. Yeah. Like that young That'd man be a, good a lot. Choice, yeah. Yes, I like him a lot. I about, also uh, like I like people who have military careers, and I believe DeSantis had a military career. Now you're you said you wouldn't want a woman. I think Christy Noem would. I be. think she's awesome. Yeah. I think she's awesome. I think she would be awesome to be something in the cabinet. She's nice to look at. Too. Yes. <laughs> yes, Bill, she is. <laughs> You know Just what? thought I'd pitch that out there. Yeah, right? time has flown by. Time has flown by. We've been here doing this for many, many years, and then all of a sudden, time has flown by. We're older. Why don't you be the vice president? We're older and we're wiser. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'd vote no, for it. I know. couldn't be. No, 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 no. I could never be in politics because I'm brutally honest. You could run, You could hold a press conference, though. Yes, I could. Yes, I could. Yes, I could. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed today. It's been fun having you here. Thank you for being here. You won't see Bill for a while because he's going back to his real job, but uh, it's fun. Amen. And uh, yeah, thank you for being here. And thank you for being a big part of my life and being a big supporter of me. Thank you. Well, back at you. Thank you, thank you. All right, we'll see you again soon, y'all, on ETC and again on YouTube. So share, subscribe, and visit us on YouTube. All the programs that we do, you can see anytime you want to. Bye, y'all.